to triple B. Be live. <laughs> You're live. Oh, oh yeah. My my new will be here. Oh. You have to get a, a new one? Well yeah, because look at the letter. B. <laughs> oh, you, you can't use the same one? Not with what we're doing. Oh. It'll be the same, but you still have the my, same phone my number. Camera's wonky. Oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't have. I'm too old to remember something new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how you ladies been? Good, good. I'm just staying busy. And the little ones? Growing. My <laughs> leaps and bounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my my youngest is two now, and he is keeping me busy. That's for sure. God, I can't believe it's two years. Mm -hmm. There's time going. Exactly. Mm. All right. I'm not getting a notification yet. I got it. Oh, do I need yeah, to Anita, are you? No, you no, no, you're good. I can hear him. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear. Well, We're not well, getting well, any calls. The only one I got to pay attention to is YouTube. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. Oh, fight it pops up. Here we go. Well, let you pick our birthday winner today. Hi, Rosa. Morning, Karen. Oh, you okay? Right. Did you get into my decorations? <laughs> no, I think it was the desk. Oh, I told you I kept you squirreling have a this morning. Birthday draw today? Yep. From local birthdays last week, we do a drawing. Are they all adults? Mm -hmm. No. 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 Kids too. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> but humans usually. You're going to get the dogs or the horses then. Mm. I mean, some people do. You didn't say nothing about cats. Yet. We don't get very many cat birthdays. I think the only one who might send us a cat birthday is Sarah from the library or yeah. Mike. I don't know when Rodmas' birthday is. Well, she was a rescue. Yeah. I guess you really don't know. The guesstimate. Then you do the adoption, Kate. Yeah. All Hi, right. Emily. Ready? Ready, Linda? Yep. Welcome to Today and You Mind, I'm Jennifer Blackwell. And I'm Teresa Straub. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful but brisk Monday morning on Z93 <laughs> in Outlaw Country. Yes, thank you for listening, whether you're listening on Z93 or Outlaw Country, or maybe you're hanging out with us on the Sunset Health Facebook live feed. Whichever way you decide to do so, thank you for doing so. Yes, it is a little chilly out there, and I know we've... Uh, Received a few pictures this morning of vehicles with frost, and one individual's car was showing that it was snow, but I guess that's you must know. Mm, sure. Well, we'll call it ice. We're <laughs> gonna see, from today to tomorrow, we are going to see a substantial jump, both in the, we're looking about 66 for the daytime high, but tomorrow we're going to jump up to 42 for that overnight low, which is good for our crops. Yes. Definitely We good don't for the need crops. that ice on our lettuce in, in the fields, um, but yes, it is definitely chilly it's been a chilly weekend um I, i'm not i'm not equipped to live in, nope. in the cold you were you were oh up gosh. in tucson for a few days i was i was up in tucson and there was snow on the mountain when we were driving in and we started looking at the weather and that first day we were there which is saturday night it was a deep freeze warning and it was like 28 degrees um nope i stayed inside i went outside to help my auntie cover her plants and quickly came right back in because it was cold i texted my dad sunday morning and i said is it chilly and i can't repeat what he texted back on the radio <laughs> because it the was, answer was yes 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 it was certainly chilly yes and um it it, it, it was really awesome but it, i just i I'm a desert girl. I can't handle this. It, this cold is not my friend. Makes you appreciate the mm -hmm. warmth that we have here. Yes, most and, definitely. And it also gives us better understanding of why the large numbers that do flock here to spend their winters. R oh. Rick says, brisk, no cold. Two months ago, I was complaining that it was too <coughs> warm, and now I'm complaining that it's too cold. We're humans. And, I, you know, th that that summer heat, it... it it, as long as it's not like over 110, I'm okay. I can handle underneath 110. 110. I can handle handle anything under 110. When you get that over 110, 100 is the new 85. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is Yuma. It, when you're born and raised here, your 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 uh, temperature gauge is a little off. So happy New yes. Year! Happy New Year! It is 2022. It is. We had a 
a sad end to 2021 with losing Betty White. Yes, I'm glad I saw it from you. <laughs> John Madden, did, did it yeah. soften the blow? It did. Because there were memes out like the last two years with all of the COVID yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's like, don't you dare take our Betty White. And, and you know what? She, she stayed, they had mentioned, you know, she didn't do much um, because she was, you know, isolating and trying to stay away from COVID and all those different things. Um, but if she did pass of natural causes, uh, she was but also it was so sad. Almost, almost 100 years yeah. old. And so that's three what, weeks shy, I think. Yes, the yeah. 17th would have been her birthday. Mm -hmm. And that's that's important to remember, too. It is. It is. So we saw a lot of tributes to her and also John Madden. And yeah. they, they did replay that All Madden special. Did they? Did you so catch it? we got to watch that the other night. And there's, Good. you know, I didn't really know a lot about him over the years. Mm -hmm. I, I absorbed certain things by osmosis, yeah. but it was really interesting to watch, and he was quite a pioneer in his mm -hmm. life. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. All right, well, today is January 4th. It is National Missouri Day. Okay, I've they're, third. They're, they're freezing right now. They're a little colder than here. Yeah, Three, what's that? Today's the third. Today's the third? Hmm. No, no, today's the fourth. No. We were oh, I'm sorry, yesterday. we were off yesterday. I apologize. <laughs> I'm off I'm the like, day. I'm off the day. day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. I believe it's the fourth. You're right. You're right. Anita's My still bad. living in yesterday. Well, I am. We're still living in December, actually. <laughs> right. Anita right. Yes. 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 <laughs> I'm getting rid of that as yes. fast as possible. Okay. <laughs> it's also National Spaghetti Day. Oh, I love. I love spaghetti. And National Trivia Day. I did not assemble any trivia Thank for you. you. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, Anita. What's today? There's your trivia. <laughs> Today's the fourth. It's Tuesday. But have you mastered writing 2022 yet? I haven't had to do that quite yet. I did a couple of times, and uh, first two times I wrote 21. <laughs> I typed it out. I haven't written it yet. Yeah, you're gonna write 21, guaranteed. Well, those those are your national days today. Are you ready for some birthdays? Sure. All right, did you write down the one that came in on the Sunset Health Facebook Live feed? Sure. All right, we do want to remind you when you buy more subs, you save more lives. And Firehouse Public Safety Foundation helps make that possible. When you purchase items at Firehouse, you can round up your change. And it all adds up over $50 million nationwide, over a million dollars in Arizona, and well over $100, $125,000 right here in the Yuma community. They provided fire equipment, some of our first responder kits. I know mm -hmm. some new cardiac related items for School District 1. Mm -hmm. Again, when you buy more subs, you save more lives. It's as easy as that. Celebrating on our birthday list today, Blake Herzog. Oh, happy birthday, Blake. Also want to wish a very happy birthday to my god brother, Louis Gill Lubov. Happy birthday. We have Mike Ledwin celebrating today. Lonnie Lopez is celebrating today. Along with Melissa Kujala. My cousin Jennifer Camarena, she is celebrating her birthday today. And we had one coming in off of the Sunset Health Facebook live feed. I think it's Giovanna. Condi is celebrating her birthday today. Well, happy birthday to all of you. Yes, and get, get your birthday shout outs in. We want to recognize your birthdays. It's super easy. All you need to do is go to monstermediayuma.com, click on the Today in Yuma tab, look for the Firehouse sub logo with the Celebrate banner, fill that little entry form out, and it goes directly to my inbox. Or you can always send it to us in a message on Facebook. You can email us. Either way, just get it in so that way we can get you on the birthday list. And today we're going to do the drawing since we weren't here yesterday again for a free medium sub chips drink and dessert courtesy of our house subs uh Marty soul says it today is her husband's birthday so happy oh. birthday to mario yes. galavis happy birthday mario all right now our guest for today is yuma county sheriff leon wilmot and he's here already so yes we're he, gonna have him draw. he's going to select one of the names at random this isn't a get out of jail free thing <laughs> <laughs> no they, they receive i can a get a room upgrade for him <laughs> It's right. a free medium sub chips drink and a dessert courtesy of Firehouse Subs. And the winner is, I need my drum roll, Susan Dodd. All right, congratulations, Susan. And again, get those birthday shout outs and anniversaries, uh, milestones, anything positive that you want to celebrate, we're happy to, to help you do that. All righty, ready to take a quick break? Yes, we, we got it. We have a special guest we want to hear. We have Sheriff Wilmot here who will be sticking around most of the hour with us on Z93 and Outlaw Country for today in Yuma. All right. The show is brought to you by Quick Refrigeration. If you haven't had that heater checkup and maybe you found that you needed it the last few days, <laughs> give them a call today or check out their website for details. You can find them online at getcoolquick.com. And remember, it's important to change out those filters on a regular basis. And visit Yuma's newly enlarged indoor shooting range with electronic target retrieval equipment, new rubber trap, ballistic panel lanes for a quieter shooting experience, and comfortable remodeled classroom space at Sprague's on 32nd Street. And Yuma Winelson is a locally owned full-service wholesaler, and they specialize in plumbing, waterworks, plus industrial piping supplies. 
You can find them on Pacific Avenue weekdays. Their motto is, we're pros like you. One of the main causes of tire failure is underinflation, causing the tires to flex more in the sidewall, heat up, and blow out. Ed Whitehead's Tire Pros can quickly and affordably take care of all your tire needs. And a few days until they open again this week. Arizona Marketplace is open for the season, and they are open Thursdays through Sundays. They have so much going on, not just vendors, but there are tons of vendors. Mm -hmm. They also have live entertainment each day, as well as wine and beer. Again, catch them starting on Thursday morning. It's Today in Yuma. We'll be back after the break. Oh, Darren, you know we will. <sighs> Supervisor Simmons says, make sure you ask him the hard questions. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Teresa. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Do I get to keep this? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to start doing the challenge they are going now. transferable to family members, though. You okay. Can't, can't no worries. Here's That's one for your awesome. birthday person. Too. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I love See, it. told you, can't get you a deal free, but I get you a real upgrade. So there you go. He did get some, That's well, cute. not a lot of golfing over the weekend because it was a little chilly for golfing. It's cool. But he got a couple days of jujitsu in. Nice. That nice. new gi. Loved it, I'm sure. Liked it. Good. It's, it's the right size, so it they can't well. get as much leverage with them for, to flip them and stuff. So after his shoulder injury, he was weighted on that stuff a little bit. So oh, yeah. it's a good idea. But he's he's doing good. He he lifted on Friday too, Friday morning, for the first time. Pace himself. Yep. And he said he goes. Uh, he texted us once when he had his follow up appointment. He goes, we basically just have to wait for this bee to stitch itself back together. <laughs> so he was he was not wrong. It's just you know, you got to have patience when it comes to healing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks, Darren. <laughs> You two need to hang on to those. <laughs> I don't plan. On, I don't plan on using it. <laughs> Have you met us? <laughs> we stay out of trouble for the most part. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> let's let's for quantify the that. Part, yeah. For the most part. <laughs> Morning, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I think it's funny, my husband works for Ferguson, and his uncle was Tex Ferguson. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's a name I haven't heard. That is funny. Long, long I, yeah. <laughs> Tex was a big boy. Yeah. Holy cow. Yep. I mean, he, even Ralph was. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I was not only in the hall this morning, I was in the back room. By yourself? Myself. And I didn't turn the light you on. You were brave. I came yesterday by myself, and I turned on every single light in here. I grabbed she, the ghost. The ghost. Yeah, she's worried about the ghost. I um, grew up with I ghosts in my house, so I'm I not, too, I'm not shakeable. I did, too, I saw her the other day, like, I saw, I was coming in, and I was looking at my phone when I was coming in, and I looked up to open the door, and something was standing at the FM console, and as soon as I opened the door, like, that. It went into Jen's office like a blur, like quit. And I enough for I was like, Elizabeth, I have things to do. Please just let me be because you were scared the crap out of me right now. And it's, I got chills. I went in there, got my stuff done, and and normally I would like go and you know I'm cross intrigued. the way. Who is this? Our we ghost. don't know. We just know her name's Elizabeth. Really? Yeah. You sure do, Brandy. <laughs> All yeah. right, we ready? Yeah. She scared me. She's friendly. But I was here by myself. She is friendly. Oh, but I was here friendly. by myself yesterday, so I just made sure to She gets on. lonely. You need to talk to her. I do. Periodically, we'll I'm hear here, music. I'm just doing work. Here we go. Welcome back to today. You I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We're too busy talking about ghosts. I'm, when I'm here by myself, I do talk to her and let her know that I'm here to get work done. I'll be out of her hair quickly. She, she likes to scare me. If sometimes. she could help pick up some slack, that'd be awesome. That, that right? Really Stop messing work. with the yeah. board. That's all we have to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she can type at least 75 words a minute. We're good. Um, Evie, I don't know specifically if that's her name, but we were told that's her name. She's wanting to know how we know her name. Years ago, we had some ghost hunters come through, and but we also caught some audio that came from one of our right. feeds, and we have like 20 different audio feeds at one time, 
and they caught something and recorded it because it wasn't a feed we normally get. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those that was garbled a little bit, but amidst the, the jumbled sounds, Elizabeth could be heard. The name Elizabeth? Yes. Okay, so I I didn't get a name, but she did tell me to play her song one day when I That's was recording right. a commercial. I, enough for me to call Jennifer over and... and did you hear this? Seclude it and let her hear it. I'm the only one that was in the recording studio, so I know I didn't say it. And it was enough to where I amplified it, turned it up for Jen, and said, yep, here you go. Make sure that I'm not hearing things. And sure yeah. enough, she heard it, too. I don't know that there's any burial ground here, but I believe this was a car lot many years ago. Well. So. <laughs> it, was a dentist, it was a, a dentistry, too, a right? A dentist more recently. Yeah. You know what? Morning, Sheriff. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, we digress. The 2nd of January was the 25th anniversary of Monster Media LLC. Oh, that's, that's right. That's our parent company yes, here. Yes, yes. So that was the 25th anniversary of our ba boss man coming in and buying this. And, you know, as we know, the, the rest is history. I think she's been here before that. I think I she was here before that because, again, was it was too. a... It was uh, owned by another radio station mm -hmm. prior to that and then dentist and medical offices way back when. So. A, a very storied history here in the oh, 900 no. block of South Avenue B. Oh, right. Wow. Morning, Sheriff Wilma. Good morning. <laughs> Did you know you would be receiving that kind of education? It's interesting this morning. That's <laughs> <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always From a snow to frost yes, to, to ghosts. <laughs> to ghosts. A little bit of everything in between. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> yes, it, it is always a pleasure to have you here. Not nearly as often as we'd like because you're a busy man. We, we've been staying busy, yeah. But we thought, you know, new year, end of it, another year, we kind of give you the opportunity to recap for the community. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that, we, that we've that we seen happen, a lot of things we never see happen because, you know, the department takes care of them. Right. But, you know, d difficult challenges the last couple years. But we have you here, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because well, there are a variety of things that, that occur <laughs> there, community There is, yeah. So, so do you start with the, the good? or We'll the... start with the good. The good. We're, we're optimistic. We're positive. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that uh, former Chief Lee Can and I worked on was getting the full-time academy out of the college. Mm -hmm. And to us, that was a win-win when the college agreed to do that. Mm -hmm. And be because the college doesn't really have a facility that's specifically designed to handle a law enforcement academy, one of the things that we've been pushing with the, our Board of Supervisors helping as well and the chief, uh, Susan Smith, as well as uh, the tribe and local law enforcement entities was to try to get the state to help us get funding to be able to put a building up out at AWC for a full-time academy. And that actually came to fruition, which the governor's office will be doing a uh, media release here shortly. But we got notice that uh, the state is going to put up half of the funding to build the building, which was uh, a proposal by the college. Dr. Cor and uh, Ratika and then Alfonso all were uh, great partners in getting the academy started. Alfonso's done an awesome job, as, as well as Ratika, on the academies to the point where AWC's Law Enforcement Academy in October had the largest contingent wow. of law enforcement cadets coming in throughout the whole state in comparison to all the rest of the academies in the state. That's awesome. Now, let, let's... Speaks volumes. Yes, let's backtrack just a little bit and explain why it is so important for us and a valuable asset to have this here. We were sending the training the trainees out to other states or i'm sorry other, other places counties, other yeah. counties in arizona for training mm -hmm. and there's quite a big price tag attached with each person there is and what would happen was we would end up trying to get seats throughout the whole state to the different academies and typically they fill up rather quickly because mm -hmm. law enforcement throughout the, the state of arizona is always looking for new new officers and you have to send them to the academy and you really don't get a viable first responder for law enforcement in, until a year after you hire them because the background's like three months and then you got the academy and then you got field training so it takes up the first full year to get all that done so that they're actually a full responder that can go out and, and do patrol so what was hard on us was not only the fact that we would have to send them to whether it was in Tucson to 
Havasu City, Phoenix. I mean, that's what we were having to deal with. And you can only get two seats here, maybe mm-hmm. one seat there. And then that employee, you have to provide them a vehicle, pay for the fuel, mm-hmm. the per diem, and the cost associated with them being gone. And, and it's big, hard on their families, it is. too. It's a difficult strain to be gone from your family for so long. It is. And, you know, being a product of the, the Reserve Academy myself, I mean, that, that was something where you could self-sponsor. Or you were sponsored back then by an agency to attend, but it was only a part-time academy because we all worked, you know, mm-hmm. our normal jobs. So we kept pushing to try to get a full-time academy, and it was hard for the college to get that started, but they were able to accommodate that. Because Tucson, for instance, when the new chief came in down there, sheriffs throughout the whole state had a, an issue with them wanting to charge us $15,000 per, per person. person. And no, no small rural areas have that kind of money to be mm-hmm. able to afford paying that much to get somebody certified. So Alfonso and Ratika jumped right on board. They were able to get the full-time academy going. The city, uh, Yuma, jumped in with uh, allowing us to use the... Uh, the clubhouse over there at the uh, the Caballeros Park over by the Civic Center, we all pitched in to be able to retrofit the, the inside of the, the building to be able to accommodate the classroom. But still, you've got students going out there and then having to drive all the way out to the college and then going out to the training center. So it's we're, we're trying to work, and we have been trying to work, to get a full-time building out there at the college so it's all encompassed in one area well they so, can utilize the efforts and spend it on the training portion rather than driving well here's a the arizona at work has been an awesome partner so alfonso worked on that and was able to get it where law enforcement entities the the cadets that go through that are actually paid through a grant versus the counties or the cities having to pay to send somebody to the college. So Arizona at Work has been an awesome partner. And that was coordinated by Alfonso Zavala. Getting with them and doing that partnership on the grant, it actually funds the cadets going to the academy, which saves the county and the cities to the point where we now have, this academy now has over 25 ranging from Flagstaff PD to Colorado River Indian Tribe to Welton PD. Um, we're, we have cadets coming in throughout the whole state coming to AWC now. And when one one class ends, another one starts. Another one starts right away. So so having the ability for the, the state to pitch in funding to fund half the, uh, the, the complex that needs to be built in the college already saying that they were going to match those funds is a, a great, great news for mm-hmm. well, Yuma the, County. The tables have literally turned, you know, instead of us going out and looking for, you know, academies to get our, our people in, they're now looking to us mm-hmm. for space. They are. And they're actually looking at the operations as a whole here. So with that, we have also been working with the college on adapting and adopting our detention academy that we put on ourselves. Okay, so that is different than the patrol academy. It, it is a whole different uh, monster <laughs> <laughs> in and of itself because it, it takes special folks to work in that environment, and it also takes special training to uh, get individuals certified. A lot of entities throughout the state send their officers to uh, DOC Academy to get that uh, initial training, and then they have to adapt from a prison environment training to a jail environment, which is totally different than prison operations. So we tailored ours many years ago under Sheriff Ogden to do our own academy, which is recognized throughout the state. And we've adopted a number of the things that uh, were applicable from DOC's training and then added on to it to cover jail operations. So now the college is looking at also putting on a detention officers academy out there as well. And we're partnering with them to allow them to use our annex for the jail environment training portion. Okay. So a lot of good news. With and a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of different of agencies work. working together. You know, oh, absolutely. It, it's, I mean, we all benefit from it. We have. I mean, you talk about the, the city councils, 
um, from the different cities, the, the chiefs of police throughout the Yuma County have all stepped up. The and tribal supported entities this, too. Our tribes, yeah. Because you look at Kashan and Kokopa, they're they're both needing officers as well as the rest of us. So it, it's a win for us. And Kokopa has been a really great partner with the AWC on assisting with the, the cost associated with the housing. Mm -hmm. So they're actually helping us with that as well. So, so the those tribes who, have been really great. Those partners. who do come down from other communities? Colorado River Indian yeah. Tribe. I mean, they, they've uh, sent cadets before, and they've had uh, officers graduate this academy, and now they're sending more. So it speaks volumes to the caliber of training, and it's tailored to more urban, rural areas versus large metropolitan areas. Whole different mindset when it comes to uh, communities. So you, you tailor it to the rural, urban environment. And if the cadets, they're being sponsored by departments in most cases, aren't they? For the full-time academy, yes. They're all actually been uh, gone through the backgrounds. They've already been hired on, and then those agencies are sending them down here. Mm -hmm. So the, the part-time academy that goes on is either a sponsorship through an agency, which we do with our detention officers that we know want to ultimately move their career into being law enforcement officers because you can start as a detention officer at 18 but you can't be in law enforcement unless you're 21 or older hmm. Hmm. so they're they, getting their foot in the door yep. they get their foot in the door we look at their performance and then if they are the ones that are exceeding as far as their their operations go then we can sponsor them through the reserve academy and then we pay for that okay so and we work with their schedule so that allows them to go to the reserve academy it builds up our reserve contingent of officers for the sheriff's office and then once we get an opening we're able to slide them over into the field training and then get them out on the street so it's a win-win plus with the academy and going through the college, it also builds up college credit hours. Mm -hmm. So that if they're working on a degree, that helps them get their foot in the door on that. So like with our detention officers that we send to the Reserve Academy, now they're getting college credits for certain courses. Now they can look at enhancing that and doing other classes later okay. to build on a degree if that's what they want to work on. So it's a win-win for us. And, and that was something that we started many years ago. So. And again, we have this here in our community. It, it's yeah, it, all in it's Yuma. So it, it's uh, been the last two years, and we've really seen it take off. It, it has. It has grown exponentially. I mean, to, to go for 30, and now you got uh, 25 and more than that, really, in this academy that's going on now from all the different entities, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome to see it grow so quick. Well, our guest with us this hour is yes. Yuma County Sheriff <laughs> Leon Wilmot. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of the show after this. We'll move to another topic. We said we're going to cover it all, all that we can within the hour. <laughs> it <laughs> is today in Yuma. Do you need a fresh start in 2022? Alan Barnes & Jones Law Firm is here to help with your bankruptcy needs. Phone or video conference consultations are available, too. You can call 783-2161 for an appointment. Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialist is locally owned and operated, offering general pest control, termite treatment and inspection, pigeon extraction, safe humane wildlife relocation, and disinfecting services. You can find all the details at AdvocatePest.com. The plasma centers are part of the nation's critical infrastructure. When you donate plasma today, you could help others, but you could also earn some extra money. Call Talacris Plasma Resources at 782-2101 for more information. And the Broken Yoke Cafe. Why wait for a table at the Broken Yoke? Enjoy the convenient wait list option. Go to BrokenYokeCafe.com and click your BYC. Yuma Info pops up, then scroll over and hit wait list. If, if, is, if there's no one waiting, it lets you know. And if there is, add your name to the list and the number in your party. It will give you current wait times and updates as you head over. It's today Yuma. We'll be back after the break on Z93 and Outlaw Country. Morning, Lindsay. Evie says, wow, I didn't realize the great opportunities. There are. It's, it's awesome, man. But that makes sense, too, with more direct and specialized training for your jail versus your prison. Oh, for them to be able to take what we built up and then transfer it into the, the college environment to be able to 
mesh it with being able to get college credits mm -hmm. for courses. I mean, that that was the biggest part. Yeah. And they're actually the ones that approached us on doing that, what, which is something that is needed throughout yeah, the state. Absolutely. So I can only see this growing <laughs> and growing. Yeah. So they're, this year is where they're looking at putting on the first academy. And they're able to hire our officers off duty to be the instructors. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. So that that's what we're doing now. Local law enforcement is actually being hired off duty to be the instructor mm -hmm. in the police academy. So that's great. It, it works out really. They know good. the rural mm -hmm. too, yeah. and they have the experience. Yeah, and they're typically the ones that we would use as our field training officers, or the same individuals that we use for putting on our own DO academy. Mm -hmm would be the ones that they would uh, utilize here. So it works out pretty right. good. What did the, your stripes stand for? Five years of peace. Okay. Because when I shared the photo from the change of command ceremony, I think you had three chevrons. Is that something different? I'm trying to remember because it, it was different. Well, I've added a few since then. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years anyway. Yeah, because that was what, 2012. 2012. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you figure started as a young reserve at 85. That's awesome. Yeah. Seen a lot of changes through the years. I'm sure. Just a few. When, when she mentioned Tex Ferguson, it was pretty neat to meet that man. You know, <laughs> that was many, many moons ago. Yeah. And he had quite the history. He yes. did. Yuma. A lot, of, a lot of yes. people don't know the amount of history. I only know because Keith, what Keith was wanting some info one day, he just started yeah, asking about it. So I'm like, I went down a rabbit hole, and I'm like, oh wow, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Evie said, so since I was little, I wanted to be part of the sheriff's posse. Just throwing that out there. And now that she's older, she wants to be part of the Caballeros. <laughs> <laughs> so do we, by the Has way. Has she got a horse? <laughs> <laughs> we can find her one. <laughs> Thank you, JD. We got a great volunteer program, though. So, you know. hear that, Evie? Absolutely. Who do they Maybe contact for that? Be uh, Ricky Moraz. He's our volunteer coordinator now. So, Sarah Moraz. I know sometimes that changes, so I didn't want to. Yeah, it does. He was. He's the last one I I knew that yeah. was in there. But okay. Yeah, so, we're so getting more and more calls as more and more community events come up. You, you look at. Uh, of course, Mado, mm -hmm. who's coming up That's here shortly, will be biggest, here before yeah. you know it. Then, of course, the uh, well, territorial prison breakout mm -hmm. that's coming up. That's over MLK weekend, isn't it? Yeah. So that'll what be this it? month. It's the one of the uh, scholarship competition oh. shoots out at Adair. It's a cowboy action yeah. shooting. So, I mean, of course, right. they did have a jump in the cases here yeah. over the holiday weekend. I guess we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Here we go. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. And still with us this hour, we have Yuma County Sheriff Leon Wilmot. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time to spend with us. No, it's good to uh, get out there and then share what we've been uh, working on at the Sheriff's Office and everything that's been going on always a pleasure and uh, it's great to have updates to see what's going on now we quickly made mention over the the break too we were just discussing how we have seen a jump in some of our covid numbers and we know that's presented an entire different set of challenges yeah. Yeah. in the last almost well since spring of 2020 is when it really kind of surfaced in our community mm -hmm. and there's there's been some community or confusion since the beginning since we started really seeing numbers line up and my the update I have for today, I don't have the YRMC numbers yet, but Arizona Department of Health Services reports 181 new positive cases, mm -hmm. and the new test report is 179. But the the convoluted part of math is they're not they're not all it's from not the, the same people. State, yeah, it could have been testing. They just got information uh, or tests done within the last 24 hours, maybe, but we don't have results on all those. Not everything was a rapid test. So people that see two more positive cases than tests done. Wait, that's fake. Well, that's 
then the numbers don't necessarily correlate e each day and the number of positives is All the right. number of tests reported. So it, it can be kind of weird looking. I know we had 404 yesterday, but that's also a combination of stuff over the holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there, there's an update there, but how does the Sheriff's Office continue to, to handle a lot of the challenges presented by the pandemic? Well, the, the biggest thing from the very beginning was ensuring that your employees were, were taken care of as far as any of the uh, recommended uh, health policies that came out. So we implemented that right away. We actually uh, have a machine that goes through every morning and sanitizes the whole the whole building. So we have individuals that do that just to, to help our, our workers. We encourage them to be cognizant when they're off duty and their activities. <laughs> so they don't expose themselves, but mm -hmm. individuals that do exhibit any kind of signs, we do the rapid test. We work with the health department a lot on guidance in regards to our employees and putting in those, those safety uh, recommendations into place. So we have a number of those that are down there. The, the big one is when you're dealing with a jail environment, that, that's a whole different scenario. So we actually, when individuals are brought in, they're, they're segregated away from the general population until the tests come back, whether they're negative or positive. If it's a positive, then they're segregated into a, a safe area and then they're monitored by our medical department. And then once they're over that, then they can go into the general population if they're still in there. But right. for the most part, we've been fortunate, knock on wood, that we haven't had large numbers in the jail. So I think right now we only have one as of on Monday. Mm -hmm. So that's a good sign for us, especially in the jail environment. you got to be real cognizant oh, of yeah. making sure that you don't have that spread in that kind of environment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the, the big topics for 2021 that we really saw, and I, I think these numbers certainly surpassed 2018, was the micro crisis in our community. Yeah. And I know at one of the Board of Supervisors meetings, I think it was held a couple weeks ago, Diana Gomez with the health department, one, one of the big questions was, what about the the unauthorized people that have entered our, our country here? Mm -hmm. Are they carrying COVID-19? And Diana had said that 3% of those were, were testing positive. That's a low number. But we have so many that are circumventing the actual border and coming through and being tested. So I know we have a lot of people in our community right now. We, we get messages every day. And I know you're getting mm -hmm. inundated with mm -hmm. calls, both 911 and non-emergency with people asking what to do, Sheriff. And I, I spoke with Barbara Rochester from Crossroads on Sunday. They're overwhelmed. They had a group of 170 migrants. And that's the term we're gonna use for them mm -hmm. right now. And people are gonna argue with that just because it's easier to remember and stick with one particular word. They had 170 people come down there. Imagine our weather. It's been cold for Yuma lately. Mm -hmm. Many of them had babies. Yeah. Crossroads doesn't have the room. They don't. Ha they're. They're all. There's no room at the end. It's all booked. They don't even have enough room for the American uh, residents that are there. Yeah, for our own people. And they provided blankets and food, and and you have to leave. We have nowhere to go. Taxis were lining up to bring them down, and we we've, we've been told that they're sharing photos with others in their group that came over. A photo of Crossroads and the address, saying, "Come here, come here." Yeah. But there's resources and, are limited countywide, yeah. and it's and it's not just crossroads. I mean, yes, the, yes, because it is as a, a mission, you know. So people are are looking for those places, but it's also our churches. You know, they see the cross on the church and they think it's a beacon of hope. But unfortunately, the resources aren't there. You know, what does what does one do? Well, and and that's a concern that we've been expressing to this administration from the very beginning is the fact that, you know, that this country is dealing with a pandemic. Everybody else is being restricted on, on travel and movement, and yet we're seeing this immigration crisis down on the border where initially they were just being released into the community mm -hmm. with no resources. Mm -hmm. Prior immigration crises that we had didn't have the pandemic involved right. in it, so we had the NGOs, non-governmental organizations, that had personnel that could step up and set up a location for them to go because Border Patrol, even with the pandemic going, could only hold so many in their mm -hmm. facility. And, and what folks have to look at is, is Border Patrol, it, I would equate them to your law enforcement officers out on the street. 
That is their main focus is border security. They're not a detention operation. That's ICE ERO. Okay, so ICE is technically equated to your jail. So everybody understands how the operation is for okay. for customs and border protection. So border patrol is your street cops, ICE is your your holding facilities and they're the ones that handle taking them into custody and then moving them wherever they need to be moved, whether it's deported or into the interior. So this administration has basically turned Border Patrolmen into ICE, a housing and transportation organization. They're, they're no longer performing their main focus, and Border Patrol is not trained to be in a jail environment, period. They're not. But yet this administration, because they didn't have a plan, has now created this this situation where you look at Yuma County, 114,000 apprehensions just in Yuma last fiscal year for them, which is their fiscal year starts in October. Mm -hmm. Okay, so October through the end of September, September. 114,000. You're not looking at the getaways. Mm -mm. You had about those are the ones that are turning themselves in. No, the getaways are the ones that don't want to be yeah, caught. Yeah, right. The ones that the numbers that you have are the ones that are actually the ones that were surrendered. give ups. Yeah. Right. right. So, one hundred fourteen thousand, and then we know of at least seven thousand getaways in Yuma, because the cartels are exploiting this whole border. Everybody that you hear, the one hundred fourteen thousand that were apprehended, they paid a fee to the cartels. It was anywhere from six thousand up to twenty thousand dollars. So cartels are making bank. Because they didn't they didn't trek thousands of miles on foot. No, they're flying into Mexicali. So they're 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 walking across with rolling luggage. Right. They're 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 not individuals that you would say is dealing with the humanitarian crisis. When I can go down there on the border and pick up a lot of their passports and IDs because they had already fled years prior those countries of violence and established residency in a different country. But now they see what's happening down here, and they're tossing their IDs, they're tossing their credit cards, they're tossing their money down there because they're coming here. And they don't want to be caught. With those documents with on With those them. documents showing they'd already fled those countries of violence. So it's it's our administration is showing a blind eye to what's actually happening. So these individuals are flying in from 140 different countries, just into Yuma. I'm not talking about the rest of the 2,000 miles of, of border, border that we're part of. So now you've already had this fiscal year over 60,000. Since October 1st, 2021. Jeez. Yeah. Till now. Oh, my goodness. So there is no plan, and that's where we were focusing, sheriffs as a whole, all 31 of us along the border, we're trying to get the Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, to understand that in the very beginning when they changed the migrant protection plan policy that was put into place, that if you change any of this, we know what's going to happen. We've been here on the border for many, many years. Every sheriff's got at least 20 years of experience in their county. They know what works and they know what doesn't. And they know what's going to happen because we've dealt with it before. But now you're adding the pandemic portion of it where individuals are going to be exposed to whatever. And it's not even just COVID again. There's no, so many you're, health concerns. You're, you're talking tuberculosis. You, you just look at 100. The, scabies. The scabies <laughs> is a huge accounts one. Of that. And they dealt with that before. Mm -hmm. And the administration didn't have anything put into play in regards to protecting not only our, our Border Patrol personnel out there in the very beginning, but any of the medical stuff set up. And we told them it was going to come. It, this was going to happen. And you're releasing people into society without even testing them in the initial part. I, I didn't see it, but Teresa and Anita were both mentioning they were down by Yuma Palms this weekend, and they saw groups, 50, 60 people deep, waiting to get on the bus. Yeah. But Anita encountered many in the parking lot, too. Yeah. And it looked like they were looking in vehicles and just checking around. Well, the thing is that uh, folks need to understand is that we in law enforcement are, are working on that. We're, we've been working with Border Patrol. Border Patrol is trying to get in as many resources as they can from other stations, whether it's the northern border or stations that don't, don't have the, the 
amount of volume that we're experiencing, uh, we're, we're pretty much equated to what Del Rio was dealing with. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's taxing Border Patrol's resources, because again, this is not their job, nor technically no. their responsibility. So Border Patrol is doing everything that they can well, to be able to move and apprehend. Right. They're, we're dealing with another issue on our side as far as law enforcement goes, the trespassing issues mm -hmm. where individuals are asked to leave, they refuse to, then law enforcement gets called. And that was part of the education with the new uh, Border Patrol Commissioner Magnus. He used to be the chief in Tucson. He, he's got a heavy, heavy lift on his side because for many years he, he didn't support Border Patrol. Now he's been in a position where he's actually a commissioner for right, Border Patrol. Right, he's running it. So now he, he's got to prove to Border Patrol agents out there that he's actually going to do his job. And we called him out on that, and I actually called him out to come down here to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he actually came here. So I'm cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. that he'll be able to take that message back to Washington, D.C. and go, look, I get what people are saying 2,000 miles away from the border, but they don't really have a pulse mm -hmm. or a clue on what the actual impacts are to these smaller communities along the border. What everybody has to understand is they're not staying in Yuma. No, they want to go somewhere else. They're going to Chicago. They're going to New York. They're going to Washington, D.C. They're what, going to Florida. What they're doing in the interim. What they do in the interim is what the local communities have to deal with. Yep. Our portion of this is while... The cartels are exploiting the humanitarian crisis, which it really isn't. It's a, it's a border crisis, period. Mm -hmm. So they're tying up Border Patrol resources over here along the river corridor, which pulls away Border Patrol from being able to be our border security experts out there securing the border. So now we have the large amounts of narcotics being smuggled in, and those that want to be smuggled in that don't want to be caught. So you look at the 114,000 apprehensions, the 7,000 getaways, that was just in Yuma County. Wow. That's not for the whole state. So while all this is going on, I had told Mayorkas personally, we're going to have deaths, we're going to have the getaways, we're going to have the narcotics coming in, if you do what you say you're going to do. And it's all come to fruition. And now we're starting to see some extent of violence down along yeah. the river corridor as well multiple uh, which we warned accounts. him in this yeah. administration from the very beginning when he came into office and now we're having to deal with this so we're trying to tackle fill the gaps local law enforcement is whether it's Summerton, San Luis, City of Yuma or ourselves we're down there trying to fill those gaps to prevent the narcotics from coming in well, we had 26 deaths so far out in the desert because of cartels exploiting individuals mm -hmm. You've had individuals from 17 different countries that are special interest countries just in Yuma. And special special interest means? They have terrorist ties. Mm -hmm. So, and you've seen the release. They've already yeah. apprehended a few in the past mm -hmm. here that were of concern. So, what's coming across out in the desert that's not being caught? Right. Well, you look at, as a country as a whole, over 100,000 deaths from overdoses. That's yeah. 270 people a day that are dying because of the illicit narcotics that are being smuggled across the border into the interior of the United States. So all of this is compounded into this whole situation right. where the cartels are exploiting not only this country, but this administration's plan. Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to exploit it until this administration says this has got to stop. You know, our NGOs are already being taxed. Yeah. You look at the mission. Yes. You look at uh, Border Health. They, they've been a great partner. They've been doing the helping Border Patrol each and every day. Regional Center for Border Health. Right. They're, they've been doing a lot of the testing, they, trying to help out. They are actually helping with testing. If anybody's detected with it, they're isolated until they're not have any signs of COVID. So the Regional Center for Border Health has been a... a a huge partner for Yuma County. And they're not getting the federal dollar out of this. No. It's all 501c3, and they haven't seen nothing as far as any kind of reimbursement for everything that they're doing down there. 
these are just part of the continued challenges. Yes. You know, we, we talked before, I know we had Coast Guard here helping out to, in some capacity, to an extent for several months, but what, uh, at the time, Border Patrol came on the show and did share, you know, they can't detain people out in the desert. That's not extra bodies we're seeing out there. The governor recently allocated a handful to come down here, but again, there, our agents are being pulled aside so they can process people instead of being out there on the border and you can't take national guard you can't take coast guard and put them out in the field and say right. there you go de detained that's just way how things are broken down yeah that's not what they're trained for but the national guard has been a benefit not only to border patrol but to ourselves as well mm -hmm. I've, I've got roughly 50 of them that are helping us because you look at our jail operations mm -hmm. they're they're in there helping open doors they can't be and the cider sound of, of inmates are working next to them, but we can't have them fill positions where our DOs that are transport officers can actually assist Border Patrol by driving their vans and help them with the transportation okay. side. National so, Guard, they've been a blessing with, when they helped with the food have. bank for almost a year. I mean, yeah. it's these again, these partner relationships are so important. Yeah, we're we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with uh, about six, seven minutes or so more of talk with Yuma County Sheriff Leon Wilmot. Yeah, it's a beast. It is. It is. And there's so many elements that people just, they don't see, they don't hear about it. Well, this this new group that Border Patrol is dealing with is uh, the, the Haitians mm -hmm. are showing a lot more violence than any other countries have. That's what I've been hearing and, about the groups of Haitians and at different hotels. And I think it's hotels. important for our community to know, you know, I know that there's entities and people have expressed to us, you know, they're they're getting you know, places like Crossroads and, and things like that where they're getting these people that are coming and looking for help and they're calling Border Patrol and things like that that can't do, do Yeah, they're calling you that can't do anything. <laughs> but I think it's important for the community to know, like you said, if they're trespassing or you are in danger, you will Call. be there. Yeah. You will and be there. And that's what help. your recent press release is when we had the, the aggravated assault, the attempted aggravated assault down uh, by the Morello Stam area. Mm -hmm. said if you feel you are in any danger do not hesitate to call 911 oh yeah so you know Absolutely. we try and stress that as we're, much we're as we down can. there well yeah we can cover that too because we, we've got 911 calls from immigrants you know out in the remote desert That's right and our job is not immigration our, our job is public safety and public health obviously so we have had individuals that have called us on 911 that were abandoned 20 miles mm -hmm. out in the desert we will pick them up and bring them out and turn them over to Border Patrol or medical if that's what's needed. So from the humanitarian side, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of exploitation oh, that's going on. And that's our concern as well. You know, the, the, the levels of violence and uh, stuff that well, some of these we, folks have dealt with. Oh, we, Trevor was here from Amberley's place a few weeks ago. We hadn't really even thought of this, the, just the uptick in response they've had. Mm -hmm. from the people's coming through from the groups that suffered assault. Yeah. And in other countries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was... Like, it's horrible. There, there's been a lot of exploitation. Of it. And, and, you know, a lot of this is indentured servitude. Yeah. We've already seen it before, and it's happening again. They've already arrested a group that had done exactly what we said was going to happen. They took away all their papers once they got to a certain location in the U.S. to work off their debt. Yeah. So, you, you know, it's... A, and you're looking at several, several thousands of dollars per individual mm -hmm. coming over, and it's... Well, right. and they're being charged for it. Yeah. So if you can't afford it, then you're going to work off your debt. Mm -hmm. And they're going to determine what that... What that value is. Yeah. So. so it's pennies, if you think of it, pennies on the dollar in our mind's eye. Oh, yeah. They're going to charge you for, this is where you're going to stay, this is how much you're going to pay for this, you're going to work for this much a yep. day. Mm -hmm. it's, it's slavery. Alright, 10 seconds. Hmm. The Today in Yuma phone lines are open. Jennifer and Teresa, a call at 782 Ready? Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. Just a few more minutes left with Yuma County Sheriff Leon Wilmot here this morning. And during break, we started talking about the press releases that we'd received from the Sheriff's Office over the last few weeks in reference to the attempted aggravated assault and then an aggravated assault down by the Morello Stem area. And you do have individuals out there patrolling. 
We, we have uh, deputies there that are down along the, uh, the international boundary each and every day. I, I would ask folks that if you do see something, please call your local law enforcement. Let them address the issues if you feel something that's just not right. Rather than approach right, right. anyone. Yeah. Let, uh, let us handle that part of it. Um, the, the key to this is, you know, much like every border sheriff along the border that's experiencing this, is not to have large groups down there on the border because we don't need that conflict, but we do need them calling their, their reps and their senators to express their concern over what's happening now. I mean, it's uh, for us to already have over 60,000 apprehensions here since October and just is months. concerning. Um, it's taxing Border Patrol's resources, mm -hmm. but for the safety of the community is if you see something, call, call Border Patrol if you feel it's an immigration issue. And if you feel it's a public safety issue, is to, to call law enforcement. We respond each and every day. Our biggest concern now is obviously the, the trespassing that uh, we're experiencing with our farmers. On private property. Individuals and private property entities, RV parks. Um, so we, we respond. We will, we will take those cases and we will do what action is needed. So that's the important part. But uh, our, our biggest concern is the administration actually coming up with some plan because what they have now obviously is not working. The amount of indentured servitude that uh, other law enforcement is going to have to deal with, we've already seen that come to fruition again because if individuals can't afford the cost of being smuggled across, then they will go to a designated location within the interior of the United States, and they will work off that debt, however the cartels deem that be. And you're not released until that debt's worked off. You're not, and that that's a concern, and they've already had a couple investigations where they've actually found groups which were uh, being used to work out in fields in a whole other state to work off their debt. They had taken all their paperwork. That, in a sense, gave them permission to be in the country. So, and when you're dealing with the Title VIII, which most of the other stations aren't dealing with, mo Title VIII is basically individuals that come into our country illegally, but there is no reciprocity agreement with the United States in that country. So they are allowed to be released into the U.S. We encourage people and. I have for a long time anyway. You need to take personal responsibility for yourself and your property too. Lock right. your doors, your car doors, and the doors to your home. Some mm -hmm. people don't like feeling like that in their, their own home, but it, it's your your safety starts right there. Well, that, that's part of uh, you know our, our community is reminding them, don't get complacent. Lock your cars because, yes, we are experiencing thefts again. Mm -hmm especially out in the foothills area where individuals have left their cars unlocked and people are going through them. We're starting to see a surge in the catalytic converter thefts again as well. So keep your eyes peeled for any suspicious activity in your neighborhoods because we're, we're dealing with that. The, uh, the traffic accidents are yeah. on an uptick for us as well as the thefts. So those are the two things that we're, we're dealing with on, on the local area that are starting to creep up obviously with us being a uh, winter visitor capital you know you, you got a population of roughly 200,000 full-time and then you add another 100,000 on top of that because of agriculture and winter visitors traffic gets a little bit hectic so take some extra time to leave earlier to go to work so you're not in a rush and we don't end up with accidents mm -hmm. out there that's right. Again, we, we've seen an uptick across the board, uh, mm -hmm. not just the county, in the city limits, too, mm -hmm. as far as those accidents go. And yeah. you're right. When you bring this many additional people into a community yeah. and the holidays don't ease any of that traffic up at all, no, gets it gets a little thicker. <laughs> I know we saw a lot of the off-road vehicles coming out this way to enjoy the mm -hmm. desert, the dunes. And, oh, yeah. and we love to see that because it's tourism and people are having a good time enjoying yeah. what our weather has to offer this time of year. Yeah. But more people on the roads. I'm glad the sand dunes are in Imperial County. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure. Mean, we we can't we cannot thank you enough for continuing to be a voice for our town and, and our community on on the federal level. I mean, you know, with what's going on, you still continue to do what you can to make sure our voices are heard. You know, and and you're going to continue to do so. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an honor to do it. And that's what I signed up for. So, 
I don't mind doing that at all. <laughs> well, we appreciate you and all of your deputies, detention officers, our dispatchers, our admin people, all of those individuals who continue to be there for us every day. Again, public safety doesn't take a holiday. No, fire, EMS, law mm -hmm. enforcement in Yuma County is uh, one that we should all be proud of. Absolutely. we all work together well and we mesh really well together. And that's a, those relationships are so important. They are. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. That was a quick hour. Wasn't it? <laughs> it goes by fast. <laughs> Before you leave, we will take our Village and Pizza Parlor selfie out in the courtyard and don't be a stranger. That's right. <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us today. Tomorrow is Wednesday, Anita. Yes, ma'am. She will be joining us for her <laughs> WTF <Fifth. laughs> segment. And don't forget, get your entries in. She does a $25 Amazon card giveaway courtesy of her sponsor, Heather Hummer Farmers Agency. Go to monstermediayuma.com, click on that WTF tab to enter there, and get your foodie delicious entry into a very special show on Friday. I'm excited for Talking Friday. racing and the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> and foodie delicious will be joining us too. Coming up next on Z93, it is the Bob and Sherry Show, and Outlaw Country brings your favorite classic country music, as well as the Phoenix Suns. Be safe, everyone, and... Watch your speed. There are some aerial crossings taking place on 195 today. So there may be detours along that road. So right. be careful. All right. KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, Anita. <laughs>